Here's an MSI GT72. Today we're going to do an upgrade to 900 series graphics, 970M or 980M, up from 800 series graphics, 870 or 880M. Uh, so as always, ESD mat, make sure you are ESD protected, you got to connect that. Remove your AC adapter, battery and everything before you start uh, working on everything. You're going to need a screwdriver, we're going to supply you thermal paste, thermal pads, the card, and the heat sink if you need. Um, so let's get started. So again, make sure you are ESD protected so you don't damage any of your components. Flip the system over and you're going to have to remove the bottom panel. So you got to take out all the screws and then it pops off. So I'll zoom in on that to, to give you a better look. Now once you get all the screws out from the bottom, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. So make sure all those are out. And then the bottom panel is still clipped down. So you've got to lift off on this edge. It's It seems like you're gonna break it, but it, uh, you know, just, I guess, watch this. But you gotta be a little careful. And then you just kind of go around and it'll kind of start popping out. So that'll give you access to the inside. So here's the video card, CPU, it's all one integrated heatsink. So I'll show you how to do that. But before you do any of that, you've got to remove the battery cable. So this right here to make sure there's no power going through the system. Or you can remove the heat sinks because it's really tight in the back here. You're gonna have to remove these two fans. So there's a few screws around the fans and then remove the cables. I'll zoom in on them to show you a better look. So as you can see, once you have the bottom panel off, you can do a lot more upgrades than just the graphics card. You could add you know, an SSD drive, you can add another SATA drive, you can add more memory, uh, replace your battery, add another Wi-Fi card. Um, but today we're gonna focus on the graphics. Um, so there's two options you can do. So as you can see, this is all one integrated piece here. It's all connected. But here, uh, you can disconnect them. So there's two options. So you can replace, or so you can remove the entire piece if you remove all eight of these screws here or you can undo this bracket here, which connects these two, and then it, th then the just the graphics heatsink pops off. Um, I've done it where you remove all of it, and it's so tight in here that it makes it quite difficult, so it's probably easier just to remove the graphics card side. Um, so if, again, if you want to remove all of it, you remove these eight screws. If you just want to remove the graphics, First, you have to remove these small silver screws here, and then this will detach, and then you remove these four, and this, this piece will come off. So I'll zoom in on it to show you a better idea, and then go ahead. Okay, so I've zoomed in on the subject area here. Again, this is the graphics card, and this is the CPU. So I find because it's so tight back here, it's easiest to remove, or sorry, take these four screws out to detach the graphics heat sink from the CPU heat sink. Once you do that, then, then you remove these four screws here to pop the whole thing off. If you want to take it all off, just take these eight screws out there. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this um, because this is just a graphic seat sink and it's just, I find it easier to remove just this side of things because it's so tight back here. So again, start with these, always use a diamond pattern. Uh, so you don't put too much pressure on one side of the CPU or GPU uh, to crack the die. So as you can see, the silver screws can be removed. These ones stay with the heat sink. Oh, I almost forgot. So the, 
as you can see, this heat sink actually has two additional screws. So there's these four, and then there's one here, and one here. Do not forget those. So as you can see, they're numbered. One through six. One through four is these four, and then once you finish that, remove this one. These come right out. And this one. So now that these are removed here, see it's kind of loose, I should be able to just easily pop this whole mechanism out and much easier than when it's all attached. Be careful, just kind of just be gentle with it. There we go, kind of slides out like this. So once you remove the heat sink, uh, one of those screws, I believe it was number five, was it was uh, in this hole right here. So there's only one more screw left. Remove that final screw, and the card pops up like that. And then just be gentle with it and pull it out. So once you've got the heat sink out, you're going to want to clean off all the thermal paste that was uh, on the die. So we have contact cleaner here, but. Um, this stuff is, I find the, uh, the thermal paste is quite difficult to get off, so we'll screw that. And then you want to do that with your old card as well. Um, if the card's still working, you could probably sell it on eBay or on a forum or something like that. But again, you just want to remove as much of this as you can. Okay, so here's the card. I'm going to put the thermal pads onto it just to give you an idea of where they're supposed to go. I find that's a little easier than trying to uh, put the thermal pads on the heat sink and then stick it on. When you're finished putting the thermal pads onto the card, you'll want to do a visual inspection and make sure that the card and the uh, heat sink are making good contact with all the thermal pads. So you're going to want to line it up with the screw holes and then you're going to have to go around and look to make sure that you're making good contact between all the memory. now so we're going to install it and once we finish installing we're going to run some benchmarks to make sure the temperatures are okay otherwise you might have to redo the thermal pads or thermal paste. To reinstall the video card you want to line it up in the slot at an angle just gently work it in and press it down and you're going to want to just put this screw in here Before putting the heat sink on, we're going to need to do the thermal paste as well on the die. Now we're going to re, uh, reinstall the heat sink. So make sure you're careful not to push any of the thermal pads off of uh, where they're supposed to go as you press uh, this into place. So it's a little tricky. quite tight back here. Once you're lined up, the thermal pads look good. So now, just 
go about screwing it back down. Now we gotta put the uh, two fins in. You might want to put the uh, cable in before you press the heat sink down. Remember, before you put the bottom panel back on, reconnect the battery cable. Now that everything's installed, you have to reattach the bottom panel. It's going to be a little tricky. There's all these clips on the sides. So you have to kind of work it in a little bit. And same as before, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws in the bottom. So now that everything's put back together, the bottom panel's on, you're going to want to turn it back over, connect the AC adapter, and uh, fire it up. We recommend uh, doing a run of Unigen Heaven, monitoring the temperatures to make sure that uh, it doesn't overheat. Open up the system, and turn it on. So now that it's turned on, I went into the device manager, and the 980M video card didn't show up, so what I had to do was press this button, which switches between the Intel GPU and the NVIDIA GPU. It restarts, it came back on, and then in Device Manager it said that it was just a Microsoft VJ adapter, so I had to go to NVIDIA's website, download the newest drivers, and now it should say 980M. does. So now let's run a set of Unigen Heaven to test the temperatures of the card. So I've been running the benchmark here and monitoring the temperatures up here and it's maxing out at about 70 degrees Celsius so it appears everything was installed correctly um, but obviously you know as you play different games and, and, and benchmark your system pay attention to temperatures just to make sure they don't fluctuate um, you don't want to be going too high or it could cause damage to your video card.